conversation is going to be moderated by Katrina Daniels, who is our exhibitions and retail gallery um, director here at the gallery. So welcome Katrina and welcome Jessica. So I will turn it over to them, enjoy the conversation and thanks for joining us today at your, during your lunch hour. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you to everyone who, um, who's joining us today. As Michelle mentioned, this is recorded. So if you don't want to be on video, feel free to, um, to take your video off. Um, if you have any questions, please drop those into the chat. We will be moderating the um, monitoring, excuse me, the chat. Um, so if anybody has questions that you are interested or you want to know more from Jessica, please let us know. We'll also have time at the end of the discussion as well. Um, so we're gonna be on for about 40 minutes or so just to be respectful of everyone's lunch hours. Um, and uh, again, thank you all for coming. Jessica, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Katrina. Um, just as a way of introduction, um, could you give our guests um, a little background information about yourself and um, a little information about your work? And I'll drop your website into the chat. So if anyone is a visual learner and they want to look at some of the images of Jessica's work during the discussion, they'll have that opportunity. Sure. I, um, I'm a full-time artist, a full-time mixed media artist. And I've been a full-time artist for about 15 years. Before that, I um, was uh, working as a university professor. I have my doctorate in adult education, not necessarily in the arts, but I'm applying it now. And um, Katrina asked me before how long I have wanted to be an artist, and I would say my whole life. Um, I thought about going to art school and chose instead to get various degrees, you know, finishing up in the field of education. Um, and I feel very fortunate now to be uh, an artist. I would say I started with watercolors and found I'm really happy with scissors and a paintbrush in my hand. And so I'm mixed media, um, primarily with acrylics. Thank you. Um, so Jessica, I was reviewing, I was looking at your website and you had this um, wonderful page that has 11 facts about yourself. <laughs> which I really love. It makes me want to um, <laughs> do something like that with myself. And um, I had no idea that you are um, such an outdoors person, that um, oh my God. nature is such an important part of, of your life. I don't think I'm meant to be inside. It's <laughs> actually quite hard for me to be inside. I. Um, which would be a heck of a lot easier if I had chosen to stick a lot around with plein air painting. And, um, but yeah, no, it, it is who I am. I, I'm not quite sure how to say it in any other way. Um, I just celebrated a birthday and someone asked me what I always, where I always wanna be on my birthday, what I wanna do. Mm -hmm. And my goal my whole entire life has been to be camping on my birthday and to wake up oh. in a tent. So. I love that. As a fellow outdoors person, I I feel yeah. that I went on a trip. Um, I guess it's maybe about a, a month or so, and I came back and I was telling my colleagues that I had a hard time being inside again. <laughs> and it was, I just really, yeah, I also really love. Um, so when it said, yeah, I saw that the line about um, being happiest with a backpack on, I I felt yep. like a, a kindred spirit in that. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> and I um, and I see that in your work. I see influences of nature in your work, sometimes in you know a more um, uh, you know abstract manner, and sometimes in mm -hmm. you know in something that is a bit more like realism. Is that a place that you go to feel inspired or to? Um, oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I. Um... I see things and it's interesting because I'm, I'm really inspired by words the most. And then it's sort of, how do I, how do I portray that? I, yesterday's a good example. I saw a Terry Tempest William quote about climbing out of the darkness. And we, the only way to climb out of the darkness is to have hope. And then I went from there to create a painting, which is basically like the galaxies with uh 
monarch butterfly climbing out of the darkness of the galaxy. And my son is visiting right now from Oregon. And he came over and he looked at the, um, he looked at the painting I was working on. Mm -hmm. And then I said, oh, I was inspired by a quote. And then I read him the quote and he just looked so perplexed. <laughs> <laughs> like the two didn't necessarily, like how did you read that quote and think about a monarch butterfly climbing out of the galaxies? Oh, uh, I love that. Words I can't are, quite say how. But the, but it's, um, there's like words and, you know, in painting, it's a two different types of expression, you know, that I said, um, and I, I yeah. do see that for, um, if we have any guests who aren't as familiar with Jessica's work, that yes, um, language is absolutely something that we see incorporated um, into your work. Um, when you are, what, can you talk about a little bit about like that physical process? Um, as a mixed media artist, when you're incorporating language, are you sort of carving into the material or um, how, are you, how are you creating, adding language into your work? Um, I often, I'm not even often, but always have words under my paintings. So when I start, mm -hmm. I will paint, um, I often will paint a canvas or a panel and then I'll write my intentions for the painting into it um, with my wet, back of my paintbrush into the wet paint. So that's not, no one sees that, mm -hmm. um, but I know it's there. I've written into it. And then I often will use collage material. So I often cut out words mm -hmm. um, and put those words right into it. So you'll see those. I quite often then paint over them, but the, the words shine through, come through. Um, I just, it's interesting. I, I just finished a series of paintings with birds, all with individual birds. And I was you know, thinking about, I've been doing a lot of work with climate change recently and how, if we knew, how many people don't know the names of birds. You see a bird, but you don't necessarily know what it's called. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that with people. We try not to do that with people. We try to remember the people we've met, but you meet a chickadee, you meet a sparrow, you meet a bluebird. I've just given really easy examples, but mm -hmm. um, you don't necessarily know what they're called. So I got this idea that I needed to have the names of all the birds on the painting so that people started placing names. I, I cut out the like great blue heron. I cut out the G, the R, the E, the A, the T. That's not, not easy. Put all the names down. I have 12 paintings. Decided I didn't like the names on them. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> it was just the funniest thing. I took a toothbrush. It's a lot of work to take all the words you've, all the letters you've collaged in. Right. And I took them all off. You know, so the ghosts of the names are now on the painting. So that might be an example of my process. It's a little bit crazy, but it's part of my process. I love that. I that I love that I'm um, both like learning about the process, but also just like that, but this particular series that you're working on. Um, mm -hmm. and I realized that like I, birding is something that interests me, but it's not, I know nothing about it. Um, but I think, yeah, giving people a little bit more knowledge and, um, and sort of empowering them to learn more will, will make a difference in sort of the importance of, of these creatures. It's really a special. Story. I hope so. Are you are you a birder? I'm. Um, I would say more. I'm just a naturalist. I mean, I love birds, but I love trees. I, I really love trees a lot. <laughs> I mean, it's just very genuine. I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> so I could make all the same comments about trees too, if we only knew the names of trees. Sure. Um, you know, if you're cutting down a tree, what are you cutting down? Um, there's, you know, I, so it's, it's both, but I just always, um, I've always wanted to call things by name. So same with flowers, same with plants. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's always amazing if you do it enough, how you retain it. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so you've talked a little bit about this, you know, and, um, as a mixed media artist and sort of, um, touched a little bit on, on some of the materials you use. Can you talk a little bit mm -hmm. more about um, what materials inspire you um, for um, whether that's the collage or like a decoupage material? 
You know, I um, I love matte medium. I love scissors, colors. Um, I paint my own papers. So I love the way the colors just come out when you paint your own papers that I then cut up. I, um, but I'm, I'm more inspired by thoughts than I am by materials. So the materials help me get to the end of communicating my thoughts. So I will use whatever materials I need. Um, it's, I just, I, um, if I can't, you know, for a long time, you couldn't carry anything that was sharp on a plane, right? If you're traveling. So I've learned to use, you know, um, rulers as cutting material. I mean, so I just need to be able to, pro I need to get thoughts out of my head and I need mm -hmm. to visually be able to get thoughts out of my head and I'll do it anyway with any materials that I can. Um, I have a whole set of uh, toilet paper rolls right now ready to make some kind of totem that I'm, I'm wanting to do a beautiful art feeling um, happy whole I, I, and a sculpture. Mm -hmm. to help communicate our use of toilet paper rolls through the through COVID. <laughs> I mean, you know, so it's it's whatever materials work for what I'm trying to say in my head. Absolutely. No, that makes total sense. Um so I've I've always known you as a 2D artist. So is sculpture something that um is that new to you or is that something that you've been working in for a while? Um it's new to me. I um we moved, I've moved from the Lansing area up to Beulah. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm talking from Beulah. And we bought an old farm that had been abandoned for a couple of years. And we had the choice to have everything emptied out of the old farm or we got to keep whatever was here, but we had to do the cleaning up. So we have a lot of new materials to work with. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's sort of when the sculpture came in. <laughs> Oh, as somebody who loves old buildings and old spaces, I feel like that would be magical. Like, it was magical. I um, I felt it was more magical than my husband did. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps trying to burn stuff. You know, we have wood piles, right? He keeps trying to sure. burn things up. And I'm like, oh, you can't burn that. I need that. Look at the <laughs> hole in that piece of wood. So. Yeah, I totally, I feel that. I, I, I feel <laughs> a lot of like wonder um, and just energy in old spaces. And there's so much history in an old barn. So I'm, yeah. I look forward to yeah. seeing you. Um, I can imagine that being really inspiring and developing like new work from that. Mm -hmm. Very much so. That's exciting. Um, one of the questions we love to ask our artists, um, and this again, you touched on a little bit, but um, when you're thinking about making work, are you uh, somebody who is a little bit more free flowing, like the inspiration, you know, strikes, um, and you want to go into your studio, or do you find that you have a process um, that's a little bit more, um, um, I don't want to say rigid, but you know, where you're like, I work in my studio at these times and, um, and you know, you have more of a schedule or maybe a combination. Oh, I would, yeah, I would love to tell you that I have a schedule and I'm <laughs> but, um, what I've learned about myself is I don't understand it, but I'm not a morning artist. So I do a lot of my bookkeeping, a lot of my computer work in the morning, um, unless I'm fully feeling full dread of having a show that mm -hmm. I have to work in the morning. And um, for some bizarre reason, I always find my paintbrush in my hand about three o'clock in the afternoon, even if I started trying to have my paintbrush in my hand at nine. Mm -hmm. And then I can just keep going. Um, I'm, I have a show that I'm hanging in, oh gosh, about 10 days. So I'm working really pretty, um, I don't want to say seriously right now and mm -hmm. daily, every day. But then I'll get something in my mind that just won't leave. The muse will hit. I, um, I just submitted a painting for a show that has nothing to do with the show I'm hanging. I worked on it for days because it wouldn't get out of my head. So I stopped everything else. And the show is called Bethel. And I 
the phrase came into my mind, my heart is a vessel. And I, I kept trying not to work on it because my other show has to do with all birds and my heart is a vessel has nothing to do with birds. Mm -hmm. And I finally had to just stop. I had to stop and I just had to create that painting. Um, and I had to get out of my head. And it's so sometimes it's when the muse hits, I think if you don't follow it, it just messes up everything else. Mm -hmm. and so <laughs> I just, um, it, so I, I don't work in a straight line. I would love to say I work in a straight line. Um, I work in a very convoluted line that all manages to come together when it needs to. Um, can you tell us about the show that you're getting oh, ready? I'd love to. I, um, it's in Glen Arbor at the Lake Street Gallery and um, called Bearing Witness is my, my title, my theme, and I got the idea. So it's, a, it's pretty much a landscape gallery, but it mm -hmm. and a focus on nature. Mm -hmm. Their shows um, throughout the summer always are. We, we were talking about birds and I started mm -hmm. thinking about what, well, and so my focus is a climate change focus. And not that anyone would know that seeing it, when you look at it, you're gonna see an eagle and an owl and a sandhill crane and a great blue mm -hmm. heron. And I have this huge painting I'm working on right now with people dancing with all the birds and insects and wildlife around them. What I'm trying to, what I'm working with in my head is this idea that we're all one with all living beings and that we're being watched. So the bearing witness is not that we're bearing witness, but these the mm -hmm. animals, the wildlife are bearing witness on what we're doing to their home. Mm -hmm. um, and that, is how I'm putting it all together. So there's, you know, there's paintings with two sandhill cranes standing on a hill watching. I, um, there's paintings with, uh, I another one with the birds flying into a sunset, but in all of them, in my, my mind, it's all of these animals watching, watching us and bearing witness to what we're doing. Oh, wow. Um, so clearly, you know, um, sustainability and the conversation on climate change is, is of utmost importance um, in your work. Uh, is Does that translate to the materials that you use? Are you con cognizant about uh, um, the, the material use? Such a good question, considering I work with acrylics, which is plastic. Um, I'm giving a lot of thought to that, Katrina. That's the best way I can say that. Sure. Um, it's, a, it's a really tough one. Mm -hmm. So I have a show next year, that it's a, for, so in 2023, that will be all on cardboard. And it's going to be actually a statement just about that question. Um, how do we as artists walk our talk? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm going to have to address the acrylic piece of it but wow you know when you spend years trying to perfect your, <laughs> your expertise, yeah. um you know it, it's really i mean because acrylics have only been around since what the 50s, 1950s 1960s mm -hmm. um you know as a substitute to oils really right. and um you know, curses. So it's the same time, you know, curses to those people who created a material I really want. <laughs> and it moves differently, so, you know, it moves differently than oil and... It does, yeah. Yeah. And I've chosen never, ever, I've never worked in oil because of the smells and because yeah. of the problems in that regard. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, for... Um, I also... Yeah, but oh, sorry, go I, ahead. You, so I was just saying, you use so little, but you know, that anyone can make that same argument. I, I, I love acrylics. So I have, I have, I have something I have to figure out with that. But you know, I do, I'm careful about where my water goes. So I've, I've made changes in my studio. Yeah. Um, Cause you don't pour, you don't pour acrylics on the drain. You, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can handle it. And I know all those and I do all mm -hmm. those. So that's a very good question. Thank you. And it makes me also as a consumer and, um, you know, a gallerist also thinking through, you know, are there expectations? Because I think sometimes there are expectations about the way art is presented, you know, so this idea of presenting work on 
cardboard is very different than kind of what we are used to seeing work presented on. Um, we're working with an artist right now who has work framed in vintage frames, which you know is another way of giving life to something that might otherwise you know end up in a landfill. And so um, that's a really you know, it's like another way to be, to think about sustainability is like the reuse of materials. Um, so it's, it's making me think through as, um, um, at, you know, as somebody who works in, in this field about kind of the expectation of presentation too. So I think there's work mm -hmm. we can all do <laughs> to be, um, to be more thoughtful about, you know, our, our material use. That's really mm -hmm. great food for thought. Um, Oh, I got, I, I'm looking back at my questions because I, I went down a rabbit hole <laughs> which happens to me sometimes. Um, one of the questions we love asking our artists too is, um, how do you stay um, motivated and um, sustain that creative practice? You know, it's, um, I think it's just doing it every day. It's, it's interesting. I. I'm also a runner, if, I, if mm -hmm. I can like parallel these two. Mm -hmm. I've run since I've been 12. I, people often say, you know, how do you find time to run or how do you keep yourself motivated? I don't, I don't even think about it. It's just who I am. I, um, I, I run every day. I try to take a day or two off a week now because my body needs me to. And I do other <laughs> things. Um, but there's a, there's a point what I, believe where it's no longer a practice it's just who you are mm -hmm. so if you take my example of running I don't say I enjoy running I don't say I like to run I say I am a runner mm -hmm. and I would say that the same now as an artist I am an artist um, I know it's who I am I know it's what I need mm -hmm. there's obviously times where you don't pick up a paintbrush but my mind is still working. I, I journal daily. I've journaled daily for, uh, oh my gosh, probably 25 years now. And I'm even just get catching thoughts in that. Um, but, and the same, if you take my running analogy, if you don't run for a week, you don't run for two weeks, it's a lot harder when you do that first mile, that first three miles, the first five miles. Mm -hmm. The same is true with painting. You don't pick up a paintbrush, you take a week off, you take two weeks off, don't, I can't expect, someone else might be able to, I can't expect to pick up my paintbrush and instantly create something I like. Sure. Um, you know, I, I, for a whole variety of reasons, I've had to take time off different times. And um, my mother was really, was very ill and my mother died recently. Well, I guess now it's been over a year, it still feels recent to me. And um I then started painting flowers, which has never been a part of what I painted. Oh my God, I, I, I couldn't paint flowers. I'm just a guy. You know how to paint flowers. But it's been so long. You know, I'd lost. So there's yeah. the practice, and then there's just who you are. There's those two yeah. pieces together. Mm -hmm. um, it's a skill, it's just like kicking a soccer ball. Absolutely. You, you don't do it, you lose the skill. There's like that muscle memory. Mm-hmm, exactly. Um, we have a guest who asked a question. Um, they wanted to know if you have any work nearby you that you could um, pick up and show the camera so that they could um, they could see an example of your work. Um, sure, let me, I grabbed my sketchbook and pull up, but yeah. I have a painting right in front of me. Perfect. That I can just grab, which is a good example of what we've been talking about. Um, so this painting right here is a cairn. Let's mm -hmm. see if I can go back a little. Um, and I, if you want to know my process, so behind it you can't tell, but there's maps of New York, Vermont, and Michigan. My daughter was heading off to med school. She'd been living in England for two years. She'd been given offers to universities in those three states. Actually, New Hampshire, not Vermont. Uh, I just happened to have a Vermont map. <laughs> and, it's close by. But, um, <laughs> and I, she chose to go to New Hampshire and not come back to Michigan. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I was really struggling with having lived out of the country for two years and then not having her come back to Michigan. Sure. And so I attained this to deal with my emotions because I had to remind myself that I really wanted for her was peace. Mm-hmm. I really wanted her to be happy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's in each of those stones are a lot of the reasons, the words behind it are what she, why she was choosing New Hampshire over being closer to her mom. I really didn't take it personally. She's now in, out of med school in a residency, and she made the best decision possible for herself. So <laughs> I was really good that I had art to be able to process it. Um, <laughs> so, but um, I wish you could see. I don't know if I pulled it a little bit closer. Yeah. So you can see some of the words and everything in it. But this big, this stone right here says noise. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and she was just trying, and this, this is the mountains because she loved the words about, she loves the mountains. I mean, she loved the mountains. Mm-hmm. She wanted somewhere when in the midst of her studies, she could go out and mountain climb. Sure. I mean, you can't do that in Ann Arbor. No. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that, does that help? Is yeah, that-, that was lovely. And then, um, for anyone who's not familiar what a Karen is, uh, it's a, like a marker, um, that, exactly. that helps to guide you when you're um, on a trail. I was in Maine recently in Acadia National Park and they have Cairns there um, that were really helpful on a a recent hike. So um, when I I remember being really grateful for when I saw them because it it was a, you know, it's a guidepost. Um, So if that gives anyone context for um, sort of an additional, like more like meaning in that piece. That's I didn't even think of saying that. Thank you for adding it. Oh, there you're welcome. Reasons about the Cairn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just it's a very it's kind of a, a niche piece of knowledge <laughs> if you're not if you're not a, an outdoors person. That's right. that's beautiful. Um, New Hampshire is also really beautiful. So, as an yeah. outdoors person, I'm sure you probably enjoy going to visit her. I did. It was it. Um, it's one of my favorite places. So yes, I agree. I love it there. I, I recently did a. A trip kind of through there and I would love to do more um oh here's a, another great question um and uh feel free to answer this um in uh what however time frame makes sense to you my question is how has your practice changed over time and that could be something where um you're looking you know more long term or shorter term maybe like the pandemic has changed you know how you work um if you could share a little bit about that, that would, I would appreciate it. Um, you know, actually, you've, you've helped me answer this question because when I left my, when I changed careers, so when I became a full-time artist and my love of nature, I was not adding nature into my art at first. I was doing a lot of play, playing by words like gumball machines mm-hmm. <laughs> and things I was trying to communicate. Um, I was trying to create ideas and I wasn't using nature and I was, I couldn't really figure out why I, I, it didn't make sense to me, but it was like, I had two separate lives, no, two separate loves happening. I hadn't figured out how to merge my love for nature and the environment and my love for art. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think I just had to get my art to a certain place that I could honor nature in the way I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. I've also always been an activist, always. Things that are important to me are strongly important to me. Um, Nature, again, being one of them, the world being one, how we treat the world, um, how we treat other humans. And it took me a long time to figure out how to merge my art with activism. And so that's, I would say, that's where I'm now heading in a stronger way. so those pieces, um, so as I, you know, and then how do you, how do you do that in a way that is approachable and accessible for people to hear your message? I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not trying to hit people over the head with it. So my example of learning what the names of birds are through art, mm-hmm. um, and, or like this climate change, you know, how are the animals, how is nature, how are the birds watching us? So bearing witness to what we're doing to the world um, because they're helpless. And so I want, I want to still 
have joy in my paintings and I want when people see my paintings to feel joy, but I don't want to lose that side of myself. It feels like it's just too important to not be using my art in a way to also communicate what's um, was deeply important to me. And um, so it, it's trying to figure that out. And I think that's, a, um, I've, I watch, I follow a lot of artists who are trying to do that, combining the two. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I just started a whole series on joy matters. Because I think if we don't continue to feel joy and allow ourselves to feel the beauty, then we'll lose, um, we'll lose our desire to keep, keep pushing forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I um, was drawn to working in the arts and in a community setting because I witnessed artists and art spaces using work to have difficult conversations and to try to create healing in different spaces. Um, and that's what drew me into the nonprofit sector versus like a for-profit sector. So I, that deeply resonates me with me, um, the importance of, of having that conversation through your work. Um, but then also the idea of still finding joy. Um, for me, that I, I mm -hmm. find a lot of wonder in nature. And um, it's something I've been thinking a lot about lately is there's, uh, I think we really uh, honor this idea of, of wonder and joy and curiosity in children, but maybe it doesn't that we don't have sort of the same expectations for adults. And for myself, that's something that I've been trying to bring back um, more of that and, um, and just not lose it, you know? And so I, that's something that, um, that really resonates with me. Um, and then off the subject a little bit, I just wanted to tell you that we have um, a message in the chat from my sister, Maggie. Um, you probably remember, <laughs> um, Jessica, that like, when my sister um, got engaged that I reached out to you because one of your paintings she had fallen in love with and um, we wanted to surprise her with it. So she's here today and she said that she loves the gumball piece that she has of yours. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. I told her. It's so um, fun that that was my example that came to mind. Yes, life. yes. <laughs> and I saw her. I wasn't sure at first if she was here, and then I saw that pop up, and I was like, oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great title. I have to say, the title of that painting, because I came up with a title before I came up with a painting, is um, God is Not a Gumball Machine. That's right. It, it, that's just in that, then I, um, you know, just that you just can't pop you can't just pop in your penny and boom out so the painting itself is a, is a cool gumball <laughs> it was very fun <laughs> yeah yeah so it's hanging in our house <laughs> Aww, yay i love that and then um yeah, so if, and we're, we're if anyone has any questions or comments or thoughts they want to share just as maggie did um popped it in the chat feel free um and i will i would love to share that with jessica and um, one more question for you is, and again, you touched on this a little bit about some of the work and how the work has changed, um, but what kind of things do you want to work on in the future? You, you touched maybe based a little bit on the idea of sculpture or maybe even translating into um, 3D work. Are there other um, bigger themes or areas that you would like to work on? I, um, it's hard for me to know entirely. I would guess, you know, it'll stay with nature, it'll stay with climate, but then I jump around. I often work, I work from ideas. And um, for a long time when I lived in the Lansing area, I always um, had paintings of the Williamson Theater because they would have artists um, create paintings that had to do with the shows. And so I'd see the show, and a lot of people I think found paintings that worked with the show, not me. I would look at the show, I'd read what it was about, and then I'd contemplate it in my mind, and then I would um, create something that worked with the show. And so I, in some ways I, not, I never really know what's coming up next. Um, like I mentioned, I have a show next summer, which will have to do entirely with questions about our 
our use of tools, but it'll still be in nature. It'll be on cardboard. Um, you know, I, I, I just started this whole flower series, which I didn't know I was, I never in my life thought I would start a whole series of flowers, but my, I spent my, um, my adult life as an artist with my mom always saying, I don't understand why you can't just paint flowers. Why don't you paint flowers? So my mom died and I started painting flowers. <laughs> you know? yeah. So it must be my, like my little tribute to my mom. I didn't know I was going to do that. So, um, so I can't, I'm not really sure where I'm heading. I, I'd liked, um, what you were saying about wonder Katrina and I use the word awe. And I think it's really important to continue to feel awe. Um, when I teach, because I teach also, we start with an awe walk where we go out and just take five minutes and just look at the world through an artist's eye, but also with awe. And then we come back into the classroom. Um, so, you know, I think as, you know, we, we learn tools and that's a tool I'm learning. And so I'm not really sure where it's taking me. That's a lovely answer. And um, what a lovely practice, an awe walk. I, <laughs> I think that's so 